What's Poppin' Tea Squad? It is me, Keisha, and today I am here with my pastor, Miss Trina Davis from Word for the World Ministries International. Pastor Davis, can you please introduce yourself to the Tea Squad? Hello, hello, everybody. <laughs> what it be like? What's up? How y'all doing? All of that stuff. Good to be here. Yes, ma'am. I've been so excited about this interview all week. So, um, how long have you been a pastor? I have been officially pastoring with my husband since 2011. Oh, okay. Okay. 2011. Yes, yes. So tell me, what is it like being a pastor, especially a female pastor in this very, you know, male dominated, you know, field? It's whore. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, it's like every other field, I believe, um, mm -hmm. because um, you're, you have people who don't view females as leaders, period. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and especially at church, um, people like for the man to be their pastor, to be their head. So mm -hmm. you can get some who treat you like, uh, you know, you the sister girl. And then yeah. you have some who have a hard time um, distinguishing the difference between, you no, know, you're my leader versus mm -hmm. you're my equal. Then you have some, it, it, it doesn't matter what you do. You're, you're the pastor's wife. Wow. You're not the pastor, you're mm -hmm. the pastor's wife. So, and then you got some who can just flow however you are. That's how they are. So mm -hmm. it has its ups and downs. And I'm sure that's with any other uh, genre or any other yeah. profession or whatever. But yeah. yeah. So I look forward to when you preach. Like I get so excited on the weeks that you preach because you uh -huh. always just send me, like I always call Sheridan and tell her about, you know, what you've spoken about that day. So I love it when you preach. Thank um, you. So did you. Grow up in the church? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I sure did. I sure did. Uh, from Cradle to the pulpit, <laughs> all of that. <laughs> yep, all the way in church. My uh, parents raised me in church. My parents, uh, even when they were separated and divorced, went to different churches or whatever. But mm -hmm. I, that's all I know. All my life is mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so where did you grow up? <laughs> On the west side of Chicago. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. The best side, in case uh -oh. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> the best side of Chicago. Yep. Uh, my church is in the, in the hood, in the heart of the hood. Uh, my home church is on Pulaski and 16th Street. You know, if your church got a number on it. Hmm? <laughs> it was in the hood. We was on 16th and Pulaski. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. So tell me, what were you like as a kid? Uh, like I am now. <laughs> like I am now. Yeah. Always. Um, Jovial, always having a good time, wanting to be fun. Uh, even a teenager, all I did was church. Um, mm -hmm. Not saying I didn't have any outside influences, because of course I did. And I loved all of that. But I was the outside influences didn't uh, veer me off of the path of church. I would bring what I found on the outside or the secular mm -hmm. world. I bring it on into church. We're okay. going to church this up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So tell me, what advice would you give your younger self? Wow, that's mm -hmm. good. <laughs> I would tell my younger self to relax and enjoy every moment. Yes. And not try to uh, hurry up and get to it and mm -hmm. not try to uh, be more or go further. Just enjoy every moment because now as an adult, I have mm -hmm. to make sure. And sometimes I have to pin moments or mark the calendar. Okay. This is the moment. Give it its due diligence. This yes. is the moment. Sit it in the fill in it. Yes. Uh, Cause I would tell my younger self, it's all going to work out. It's going to be all right. Just enjoy every moment. Yes. Because I know when I was growing up, I wanted to speed past everything and, you know, just being fearful and not knowing what your future mm -hmm. is going to be. And yeah, I wish mm -hmm. I would have just calmed down. And like you said, just stayed in those moments and enjoy yes. them. Even the bad moments took yeah. the lessons that needed to be learned and, and to move forward. Cause you know, when we're kids, we just want to be grown. Yeah. yeah. Just, that's that's your motto. I can't and wait till I, I get grown. 
Yes, and now I wish I could go back to being a kid when life was really easy. Where is the button? <laughs> Where's the button? Where's the pills? Can we do this again? Where's the reset? Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, ma'am. So yeah. um, describe yourself in five words. Describe myself in five words. Um, That's not a word. Okay. <laughs> describe myself in five words. I'm a good time. That's That's mm-hmm. a phrase. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Can I count that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, have a good time. Okay. I am. Um, hmm. It's always wow. Good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Good. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm a good time. I am wise. Okay. I believe I'm. I'm wise. Um, I am anointed. Okay. Yes. I am. A nurturer. Okay. And I am creative. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I can mm-hmm. see all of that. I can see Thank all of that. You. you can see always, it. Yes. <laughs> and Sharon is always telling me, like, my mom is my best friend. I love you guys' as a relationship and how close you oh. and Sharon are. She always talks about how funny you are and everything. And for the viewers, this is my first time ever speaking to Pastor Davis, like we have never spoken. So this right. is for me, what would you say is your greatest accomplishment? My greatest accomplishment uh, is my family. Mm. Everything in- encompassing my family, being married, uh, being a good wife, being a good mother, the best mother I could be. I think anything that involves my family, I, that's my greatest accomplishment. Yeah, I would agree. I always tell everybody, Kyrie's is my biggest and greatest accomplishment. And mm-hmm. without him, I would not be where I am today. Like he has kept me so focused and goal driven. And it, without him, I don't know where I would have been. <laughs> so, right. yes. We do it um, for the babies. You do it for yes. the babies. Yeah. What would you say would be your greatest strength and weakness? My greatest strength is being there for my family. Mm-hmm. I am strong for my family, whether it's advice or a hug or whatever it is. I am very strong for my family. Mm-hmm. My weakness is I am very strong for my family. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I don't put myself on the list. Yeah. So that would be the weakness. I sacrifice yes. a lot of what mm-hmm. I would do or what I would want. And make sure that I'm strong. Yeah. For my family. Yeah. We as women do that so much, put our needs yeah. and wants to the wayside. It's natural. It's yeah. natural. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I would agree. What or who is your greatest inspiration? What or who is my greatest inspiration? Um, it, it changes throughout life. Mm-hmm. So uh, at this moment, my greatest inspiration is my husband oh. because. I watch him daily um, be disciplined mm-hmm. and uh, be diligent in his, he's on this weight loss journey and getting healthier and being whole mm-hmm. and well. You saw that picture? Yes, ma'am. Like, so you just going to be skinny? <laughs> <laughs> For real, that's what we doing? And I'm eating Cheetos, but okay, okay. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's my greatest inspiration and watching him uh just on this journey. Mm-hmm. For, so that's where I am right now in okay. my life. Of course, it has changed down yeah. through the years. And then I I try my best to find moments of inspiration mm-hmm. throughout. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I know you that you just turned 50. Congratulations. I just turned <laughs> 40. We both had milestone years. Thank you. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. How was your 50th birthday party? Let me tell you. I'm going to show some pictures on the screen, but let me (laughs) let the viewers know how Uh fabulous it was. Uh (laughs) (laughs) Uh-oh. It was, as they say, lit. (laughs) As they say, you know, I ain't going to talk about who they are, but as they say, it was lit. Yes. Uh, we had a fabulous time. It was what I had imagined it would be. Mm-hmm. Uh, very comfortable, but turnt. 
as they yes. say. <laughs> I'm getting down with what they say. I'm getting down. I'm having okay. a good time. Yeah. So it, people that I wanted to be there was there, not a judgment zone, just free, carefree, having an adult good time. Yes, you look so beautiful. I loved your white custom Thank gown, you. ma'am. You Thank were you. just the bees, bees. Everybody looked so beautiful. I wish Thank I could have been there. I was so blessed and thankful that Sheridan was able to come down here for the Paper Heart premiere and then yes. she right out to make sure that she went to her mother's birthday party. So Sheridan had a full day of fun. She was killing yes, she it. Did. Yes, she <laughs> did. So what is it that you know now at 50 that you wish you would have known in your 20s? Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, I wish I would have kept my heels on. Mm. I wish I would have kept wearing high heels because... Mm -hmm. Um, a older lady who is in her seventies now might be 80 by now. Mm -hmm. Um, she wears like three, four inch heels, four, wow. at least four all the time. And she wow. said the reason why she can still wear them is because she never stopped. Wow. And I, my body reminds me all the time. <laughs> I don't know who you think you is, but we don't do that no more. <laughs> That is one thing I wish. Yes. <laughs> that yes. I, that I, could see I can't go face. past three and a half. I can't do all that tall stuff. Mm -mm. Nope. 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 And it's not, and it's not so much the, the height of the heel for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just like, okay, we, we <laughs> did, we walked in, we got them on y'all cities. Okay. I'm saying, yeah, I can't wear them about. for a long period of time now. Uh -uh. I used to be able to wear heels all the time. All day, no issues, no problem. Girl, mm -hmm. they could be two inches. I'm like, well, my house shoes. Uh, I don't blame you. It is just far more comfortable because now in my older age, I've gotten into wearing sneakers so much. And Sherry to be like, how many pairs of sneakers do you have? I'm like, girl, this is comfortable. Uh-uh. It's all about comfortability the older you get. Um, yeah. So please tell us about your love story with Apostle Davis and me being single, waiting on my husband, for God to present him to me. Let us all know what it was about him that let you know that he was your husband. Okay, so while y'all trying to get all up in my business, <laughs> no, okay, okay. <laughs> no, I was minding my business. Okay. That's key. Mm, yes. I was minding my business. I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Mm. I was um, doing what my my journey did take dictated for me to do. I was doing what God had called me to do. I was in church, at church, doing church. I was not putting on a facade, not looking for anybody. I was doing what I naturally do. Mm -hmm. And he came uh, to my church. He came with a friend of ours, and I didn't even know he was there. Mm. That's how engulfed I was in doing me. And okay. minding my business. Somebody okay. will get it in a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't even know he was there. I found out uh, some time ago, I believe it might have been the next Sunday or two weeks or so later. He called my church because he was looking for singers for his group. Mm -hmm. And so he called my church and a young lady who is now deceased answered the church phone. Who wasn't even supposed to be answering the church phone. She answered the church phone and gave him all of my information. He called and inquired about me because he wanted me to be in his group. She gave him my address, my phone number, all oh, of this information wow. for somebody she had never even seen. Wow. So all of these, all of these little steps, I did not manipulate anything. It wasn't, you know, planned out or whatever. He saw me. And he says, when he saw me, he said, that's my wife. Oh, okay. And I, I didn't see him and say, that's my husband, because I didn't see him. I was busy tending to God's business while God was working in the oh, behind yeah. the scenes. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes, yes. So that's key. That's key. If you engulf yourself into doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you mm -hmm. be the truth, you and you know just be in the moment and do what you're supposed to be doing whatever is for you will find you we got together he called my house and um asked to speak to my mom and was asking me to be a part of the group 
So that's how we connected. We became friends first. I became a part of the group. And to tell you the truth, in the beginning, I did not even like him. <laughs> so, I didn't like him, like, as a person. Like, uh-huh. you mean. <laughs> uh-uh. I, didn't like him. He was me. I, I didn't like him as a person. But what softened me up was because how he was as a leader, he was the head of the group. And okay. was, how he was as the leader was not who he was with me. Oh, okay. well, we would go out afterwards. Maybe we'd go out and, you know, to lunch or whatever after rehearsal or after an engagement or something like that. He was friendly. He was my friend. He And then oh. we developed a friendship till we became best friends. We were like best, best, best friends. We're so close till he was setting me up for my prom date. <laughs> we were oh. like, <laughs> oh. yeah. We was that kind of close. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so that the best friendship developed until we, he was already attracted to me because mm-hmm. when he first mm-hmm. looked at me, he said, that's, that's my, my wife. wife. Yes. yes. And so we just developed the friendship and we got into a big, big, big argument one night. Uh-huh. And he stormed out or I asked him to leave, whatever the case was. And yeah. I remember specifically praying, God, if this is my husband, bring him back. Mm. Be- before I finish, he was ringing the doorbell. Wow. Wow. And the rest is history. <laughs> well, you have set me on the right path. Let me know I'm doing the right thing. Mind my business. And Mind say, your come business. And he will come. Yes, <laughs> yeah. ma'am. You have spoken a word to me today. I needed that, honestly. Um, <laughs> that's an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing it with us. So Sheridan, my best friend, is the mm-hmm. oldest of your five children. How was it yes. raising Sheridan? And what kind of child was she growing up? <laughs> listen i had i i believe i had nothing to do with raising sheridan i was transportation as my oh, husband boy. used to remind me all the time uh sheridan was absolutely spoiled by everybody of course because she was the first Mm-hmm. granddaughter first grandchild on my mom's side of the family mm-hmm. and then this was his first child on his right. mom's side of the family so Sheridan was always surrounded by people who loved her people who always wanted to take care of her I hardly had any was allowed to <laughs> say anything because everybody loved them some Sheridan you know and yeah. she was just a lovable for real for real a real lovable kid she is and still is a clone of her father Wow, yes, she is. Yes, she yeah, is. She, yeah, she's a clone of her father. She has always been a leader, even mm-hmm. growing up. She's always been a leader. She's always been a take charge person. She and churchy. Yes. Yeah, she couldn't <laughs> help it. She couldn't help it because both of us, uh, both of her parents was raised in the church. But she she didn't give us any problems. Okay. Any problems whatsoever. She's a joy. Yeah, I, I don't even know if you know our story of how we became friends. You know, she was a reader of my work. And every time I would come to Chicago, I would have the um, lunches or dinners with my readers. And she mm-hmm. would come each time and we would kiki and just laugh and stuff. And then eventually over the years, that grew to um, us speaking on the phone and I would read her my work or whatever, get her feedback. And Mm -hmm. then, you know, when she got ordained as a pastor, I remember Mm -hmm. her telling me about it. She was so excited. And I watched her, um, the event that happened at your church that day when she was, you know, ordained as a pastor and everything. Uh And I was, I hadn't belonged to anybody's church or whatever in years. I hadn't even stepped foot in the church in years. I prayed, but that was about it. But I would just slowly but surely start to ask her questions about God and the Bible. And she would, you know, tell me everything that she knew. And then, like I said, even after that, we just, our friendship could just continue to grow and grow and grow. Mm -hmm. And I would go to her for advice, you know, about my life and about God and stuff like that. And she would always give me a word. And then I was like, well, give me the information about your church. And so then, yeah, so then I started watching the sermons and stuff. And one day we was on the phone. I was like, 
y'all don't become a member of your church. And she was like, huh? <laughs> like she was so shocked. I was like, yeah, I'm about to become a member. And so it just went from there. And she has just been such a blessing to my life. And she's just one of the sweetest people that I've ever met in my life and just an overall great person. And I trust everything with her, you know, oh, and she's like my little big sister. Even though I'm older than her, she be getting me together at times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. That um, is Sheridan. That yes, is Sheridan. All yes, of that. Is. Yes. <laughs> so um, how proud are you of all the things that she's accomplished in such a short amount of time? You know, I, I don't know how I'm able, if I'm able to express it, but mm -hmm. I am extremely proud. I am godly proud of her. I am motherly proud of her. I am equally as proud of her in, in ministry as a creative, as all of these wonderful things, as um, I, I don't know how to express it. And I try my best, uh, both, uh, both her parents, we try our best to tell her that. Mm -hmm. All the time. I don't we don't ever want her to wonder, ever want her to feel um like she's not enough or that mm -hmm. what she isn't what, what she's doing isn't uh seen yeah. or being appreciated. So we tell Alpha, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I try to do that to all of our children. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I want you yes. to know that. Yes, yeah. because I thought I worked a lot. But that child works a lot. I look up and she's like, I just wrote a book and it's about to be out. I'd be like, when do you sleep? When do you sit down, girl? <laughs> Jesus Christ, she makes me look lazy. <laughs> Our work ethic is crazy. What we were actually here to discuss is your new single, Not Too Late. So who is your favorite musical artist? Me. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. Yes, you better tell them. Um, so what musician do you admire the most and why though? Uh I admire Michael Jackson and Prince mm. the most. Mm -hmm. Um Michael Jackson because he's just a genius. Exactly. Just I, I mean, I don't have to explain these yeah. two. Just you could just say Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. say Prince. Prince, self-taught every instrument you could ever think of, dream mm -hmm. of, just because that's what he wanted to do, that's yeah. what he did. And that's, that's kind of uh, how my creative juices flow. That's what I wanted to do, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I want to say, that's what I said. So yeah. Prince, Michael Jackson. Yeah, I mean, nothing else needs to be said. Absolutely. Did you, did you come from a musical family? Sure did. Sure mm -hmm. did. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, so musical, we kind of looked at you kind of sideways if you didn't have anything to do with music. Like, uh uh. Yeah. When did you know that you could actually sing? Like, when, what was the age or what was the time where you was like, oh, I can sing? Or when somebody was like, oh, girl, you can sing? Um, well, I don't remember not having that experience. Oh, okay. So it's, it's been, uh, I mean, I'm not, you know, Boasting. I'm just, you no, know, you saying, tell it, it is what it is. You tell it is what it is. I always had the gift. <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> no, I've been in church. I've been in church all my life, and my church uh, did consist of my actual family a lot. Right. So we all sang mm -hmm. all the time. We was in yeah. the little kids' junior choir. You don't, you, we didn't have the type of choir. You just get in the choir because you're a little kid. Yeah. You get in the choir because you can sing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you yeah. can't sing. We gonna find something else for you to do. <laughs> yeah, Sharon always tell me how you all sing around the house all the time, all and everything. So it has went on to your own family now. Mm -hmm. Um, did you always want to be a singer? But you just said like you just grew and grew up in church. But did you want to become a solo act? Like when did you know that you wanted to venture off and do something on your own? Well. My uncle gave me a nickname. Um, my uncle used to call me Star mm -hmm. when I was little. And he would say, because one day you're going to be a star. Mm -hmm. I used to lead songs. Everybody used to lead songs because that's the only reason why you was in this choir, because you could sing. So right. you had to have an opportunity to lead songs. And I like the applause. I like I yes. like the microphone. Yes. Wait a minute. Yes. This is nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> So I was cool with that. Um, so when I uh, when I was with my church choir, 
being out front and leading or directing or being the president, all the, being a leader in the mm -hmm. church was very comfortable for me. Any type of leadership position is very comfortable for me. That's where I thrive in leadership. So when I met my husband and he was doing, uh, he was putting together the group that crossed over into now I feel like a professional. Okay. I feel like, oh, I'm really heading down this okay. path yeah. of being that star. Yeah. So then when the group disbanded, my husband was the one who brought it to me and said, why don't you become a solo artist? Okay. And I said, well, <laughs> no, in, in my head, duh. I've <laughs> been waiting on the moment. That, that's how I'm supposed to go. But yeah. I said, well, cool. So I, uh, let's try this. We did a concert with just me. And that was my absolute first time doing a solo concert. And I said, depending on the response of the audience, if they for it, let's do it. And if okay. they not feeling it, we do something else. Okay. Long story short, they felt it. We doing it. Okay. Do you just sing or do you play instruments as well? I play the acrylic. My nails don't. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody one day going to let me play the acrylics. Won't nobody let me be great, but that's all right. I, I'm working on my own record and I'm going to play. Yes, ma'am. You better yes, give it to them. Yes. <laughs> Yo, so but low. I just use my, my voice as my instrument. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what is your favorite song to perform? Uh, okay. Right now, it's not too late. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. That is, yeah. But I, I like performing. Mm -hmm. Period. Have you ever felt the pressure of looking a certain way in order to be as successful as a musician? Because you know how this industry is. No, I've never felt the pressure to look a certain way, but mm. I have been pressured to sound mm. a certain way. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, I have been pressured to sound a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, even as, as far as, let me start vocally. I have been down through the years, almost shamed and looked down upon because my voice is deep. Mm. So even growing up, I have been mistaken as a male. Yep. I've mm. been mistaken as a male. When people hear my voice. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. N no, I'm, I'm a female. Yeah. I have been mistaken as male. And then as far as singing, um, I grew up in an era where if you weren't a soprano, you hitting all, all the this. high notes and mm -hmm. the high tones, nobody gave you a second thought. Mm. Now, although Gladys Knight blew everybody out of the water, she yeah. is a living legend. Yeah. But when you bring her up as an example, people go, well, yeah, but that's Gladys. Yeah. No. You're right. <laughs> you know, but it, and especially in gospel music, which I have the uh, most experience, the mm -hmm. only experience. Yeah. If, if you weren't a soprano wailing and singing out the rafters, nobody gave you a second thought. Wow. It wasn't until I don't know when it changed, if it has changed, that people are now starting to give some attention or at least some kudos to like the Leandria Johnsons, yes, uh, you know? Yeah. So you don't, it was, I used to always say, you don't have to be a soprano to be able to sing. And, exactly. and even when you were, even when I was leading songs, you know, okay, start up there, go up there. I don't, no, I don't live up there. I don't live <laughs> up there. This is where I thrive. I'm the right. I'm the right. And I, I used to say, uh, the altos make the sandwich. Yes. Come on. The altos yes. make the sandwich. You want everybody to be a slice of bread? You want, if, if you're not a soprano, if you're not a tenor, then, then what? So if you're a guy, they expect you to be a tenor. But if you're a girl, they expect you to be soprano. But if you don't have an alto in the middle, you ain't got the sound. Exactly. Exactly. Sheridan told me that you have sang backup for quite a few people. Can you let us know who? Oh, I have. I've done back around for um, Al Jarreau. Okay. I've done um, Michael Buble. All right, Mr. Buble. Uh, oh, on the same set, yeah, Brian McKnight. 
Hmm. Uh, and a lot of gospel artists, lot, lots of gospel artists, different choirs. Um, I did Derek Coley, my favorite, my absolutely, absolute favorite. Nobody mm -hmm. like Derek Coley. Um, it's quite a, 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 a lot. Okay, so you've been out here. You better let them know. Okay. So you released your album titled My Turn, which is available on all streaming platforms, you guys, in 2009. How was mm -hmm. the success of that album? Hmm. It was, <laughs> it was, it, it, I, I, I believe, I believe it was a success in terms of the message mm -hmm. that it, uh, displayed and in terms of the statement mm -hmm. that I've made mm -hmm. now financially then mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm not I don't, girl, I didn't yeah. but uh -huh. <laughs> for those that were able to hear mm -hmm. those that were able to uh receive what was given mm -hmm. I count that as a success okay now why was there such a long time in between projects if you find out, would you please let me know? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, because, I mean, as life will have it, you get promises and promises and promises. You get, okay, we're going to do it, then life happens, okay? Yeah. Then we got the budget, then we don't. It's just ups okay. and downs, ups and downs. And mm -hmm. in, the, in the ups and the downs, I go, okay, I'm not going to do this no more. And then in the ups and downs, I'm going, okay, sure, let's do it again. So okay. it was just life. Okay. So it was never a thing that, okay, it didn't do well financially and it made you feel like, oh, it didn't do good. So I'm just going to leave it alone or anything like that. Oh, no, never no, that. no, no. Okay. Good. No, no. Good, good. What prompted you to try your hand again in releasing this single after all these years? Oh, well. Before I even got to the single, I was again minding my business. After <laughs> after uh, my turn, I was minding my business, and a producer slash musician friend that I had worked with some time before found me on social media wow. and said, "I've been looking for you." I don't know how they was looking, for, but they was looking for me. Uh -huh. And they found me on social media yeah. and said, I've been looking for you and I want to do an album. I want to do a record. On oh, okay. Uh -huh. So I'm going, oh, okay, God, we, we about to do this again. <laughs> we, about to, we about to do this again. So long story short, that didn't happen. Oh, wow. Jesus. Again, that didn't happen. Um, and that wasn't the first that didn't happen. Yeah. So yeah. after many that didn't happen, mm -hmm. I go, you know, I'm going to stop trying to pursue this professionally. Mm. I mean, if something kicks off, it kicks off. You know, if, yeah. so, if somebody find me again, they find me again or whatever. I, whatever. I'm so just going to do everything else that I've been doing and whichever one jumps off is going to happen. So not too late came about because. I had decided for my 50th birthday mm -hmm. that I was going to release some music. Okay. It was going to be uh, an actual EP. Mm -hmm. And um, this was actually my plan B because my plan A was I want to be real grown and go to Mexico. Oh. Before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I'm being 50. I'm being uh -huh. grown. grown. But let's uh -huh. go to Mexico, you know. Mm -hmm. And so pandemic happened, and then the Lord tapped me on the shoulder and said, "Sit down." Yeah, he actually <laughs> said, "Stay put." And uh -huh. I said, "But everybody's going." And I'm looking at the pictures on social media, and this one is kicking over here, and this one is on the beach over here. I'm like, "Why I can't, I can't go. go? Why can't I go?" Mm -hmm. But again, his answer was, "Stay put." Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to stay put, but I have to celebrate. It's the 50th. I got to celebrate. So I'm going to put some music out. So the plan was to do an EP. And here we go again with disappointment, disappointment. I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to do it. Send me the music or send me this disappointment after disappointment till I'm running out of time now. I'm about to be 50 with no yeah. EP. So then 
uh, an angel came and was like, hey, I'll do a record on you. His name was wow. Gerald Gray. Gerald okay. Gray, a, a producer that I've been knowing since like forever. Okay. And the, the time frame that he came in allowed us to be able to get a single out in time mm. for mm. my birthday. And that's wow. how that turned out. And it is an amazing song. Tell me what was the inspiration behind the song? How did it all come about? It's it's always with me minding my business. I was driving. <laughs> <laughs> real. I don't I don't never sit down and plan to do these things. Okay. I was driving and the lyrics just came. So I pull over, take out my phone, and I start uh typing in the lyrics to the song. Uh-huh. And I got it like piece by piece. And but I had the lyrics. A long time ago. Wow. And so when I had I had all the other songs already ready to uh to record, but my husband said, you need to put some music to this one so we can get the whole EP going. Yeah. So I had four songs and this was the last song. I had wow. the lyrics, but I didn't have the uh melody for it. Okay. So one day I'm for real, I'm just driving and I'm just don't let nobody tell you what you can or cannot do. Oh, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. So yeah. I take the phone yeah. and I'm recording it. And mm-hmm. that's how I got it. Wow. And so because of the message of the song and where I am now in life, mm-hmm. it had to be the first single out. Yes. It, oh, I love that. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. So now. Let's talk about the photo on your single cover as a pastor. How did you get to the point where you are now with being comfortable with showing more of your physique? Oh, <laughs> what it? <laughs> Sheridan told me to ask you that one. <laughs> uh, that's all right. We'll talk later. We'll talk later. <laughs> but in all actuality, it was very strategic. Okay. Because the point of the single is, is not too late. Mm-hmm. And in the intro, I tell you, they say you should have done it in your 20s. Mm. They say the market is full. Mm-hmm. They say you got to have a degree. They want you to play by their rules. Okay. So the point of the photo is it's not too late for me to be sexy, even though I'm 50. Mm-hmm. It's not too late for, for me to uh, deliver this message and to be who I am, even though they say as a pastor, you shouldn't do these things. Mm, yeah. But I'm presenting to you my whole self. Yes. This is Trina Davis. This is not Pastor Trina Davis. This yeah. is this is not for people who want to corner me or put me in the box. They will never get it. They will always say a pastor shouldn't do that. Well, mm-hmm. I can say that a, a, a painter shouldn't do that. Right. I should say a, a nurse shouldn't do that. But at this point, you don't let nobody tell you what you can or cannot do. Amen. So Trina Davis, the artist, wanted to show you Trina Davis, the artist. Yes. Yes. If you could change anything about the industry, what would it be? First of all, I want to find out who's giving out these titles because I don't know who's voting for this stuff. I just want to know who who <laughs> giving out the titles. Where is where is the meat? <laughs> yeah, but I would I would really would like to change um, how there seems to be no room for anybody else. Mm. If you haven't, if you don't come out already making it. There is no room for the independent. There is no room for new artists. There's no room. I just want to find out who are the powers that be and why do they keep having the say so over who is successful and who is not successful. Mm. And you can never get to those people. And it it never changes. If you are not Kurt Franklin, then you got to struggle to get your music heard. If you are not the who's who in whatever your genre is, it's like you got to come out being on top already. And yeah. they, nobody respects the struggle. Nobody respects the process. Either you come out, you're a superstar or you're nobody. Mm. And it discourages people from yeah. even trying to become what they really want to become or trying to become 
uh, what they are even destined to become because you have the people who are already on top forgetting what they had to do to get there, yeah. telling you what you got to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I got two more questions for you. If you uh -huh. could pick a song that describes where your life is right now, what song would you choose? Not till night. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. If you would please bless us with a little something, something from not too late, that would be great. If you don't mind. Don't let nobody tell you what you can or cannot do. I Hey, just make your own decision and do whatever you want to. Hey. I, yes. Not too late. What you want to do, what you want to do is not too late. What's stopping you, what's stopping you is not too late. What you want to do, what you want to do is not too late. What's stopping you? Yes, that is a group I love. And you sound a lot white Gladys Knight, by the way. Why, thank yes, you. you do. Yes, you <laughs> do. You be singing down. I love what you sing. I love what you sing on Sundays. I be getting my life. I don't. I uh, tell Sheridan all the time, I listen to the sermons when I'm in the bathroom getting dressed and whatever. And so mm -hmm. I be in the shower, just in there praising and thanking God and stuff. And Kyrie's be like, what is going on in there? <laughs> Get it where you can get it. Get yes, it where you can get it. Thank you so much for this interview. You guys have to check out Mrs. Pastor Trina Davis' new song, Not Too Late, because it's not too late. I always tell my supporters that no matter what you're going through in life, do not let your circumstances stop or hinder you from reaching your goals. My mama always told me growing up where there is a will, there is a way. There so is a I way never thinking that there was a limit on anything that I mm -hmm. could do. And so this song is not only still a motivation for me, but prayfully to so many other people. Uh, it is available on all streaming platforms. Yes. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for being a source of inspiration and guidance for myself. Um, I've been waiting to finally speak to you because like I said, Sheridan and your husband speak nothing but your praises and you lived up to the expectation. You are beautiful. Uh, woman. Thank you so much for everything. And please you. let everybody know where they can reach you on social media. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, for having me, it was an absolute pleasure. I loved doing it. I love yes. it, love it, love it. And thank you for being a part of our church and our yes, ministry work for the world. Thank you. Uh, for this space and this opportunity. Thank you uh, for all of this. Mm -hmm. I am on uh, Instagram, Mrs. Trina Davis. I had to put the Mrs. on there because people be trying me. You know, yeah. I'm <laughs> Mrs. Trina Davis. Mm -hmm. I am on Facebook. I have uh, three pages on Facebook. Uh, Trina Davis, my regular page. I have Trina Davis Ministries, um, which is all things ministries. And I have a women's empowerment page. It's called Living on the Wedge. Um, okay. It's for women. Um, so you can find me there as well. I'm on Twitter and I am on TikTok. All of that, Trina Davis. Yes. Okay, and my please. song, you can, you can find it on all digital platforms. And please let the viewers know if they want to... Uh, check in with the um, the church. Where can they find you all so they can get some, you know? Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. We are Word for the World Ministries International, soon to be Word for the World Church Chicago. Okay. Um, we are located on the west side of Chicago at 2903 West Arlington. Um, we are Facebook Live uh, every Sunday morning yes. at 10 a.m. If you are not in the Chicago area, you can watch us, tune in, and be engaged in the worship experience Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. And yes. we would love to worship with you. Uh, we are led by the illustrious, yes. my best friend, Dr. Apostle, Apostle, Dr. Yes. Joseph yes. E. Davis, and our yes. assistant pastor is the lovely prophetess, Sheridan yes. S. Davis. Yes, and I is. am your humble pastor, Pastor <laughs> Trina. We would love to have you worship with us. 
I was telling Sheridan yesterday um, because I called her to let her know that my radiation process is going to end early. I was like, but I called your daddy and told him first. I was like, you know, that's my place, girl. So sorry. She was like, girl, please. (laughs) But thank you. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, you guys, please check out Pastor Davis' new single, Not Too Late. It is available on all streaming platforms. It is a bop, as you can hear. Please listen to it. Please share it with all of your family and friends. Let's blow this single out the park. Thank you guys for watching this interview. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell button. I will see you guys on the next video. Love you. Bye. What's stopping you? What's stopping you? Not too late.